With the Nokia Lumia 1520, Nokia and Microsoft have embraced the trend of the supersized screen. I'm Jessica Dahlcourt for CNET, and this is your first look. Now this phone is notable for two reasons. One is the extra large size, and the other is that it is the first Windows phone to use a quad-core processor. But more on that later, because first I wanna talk about the design. The 1520 has a unibody design that is nice and sleek. There's a nice little border around the screen, so it's not gappy at all. One thing you will notice is that there are two doors that you have to open with a SIM card key. The bottom one is for the nano SIM and the top one is for a micro SD card slot and that will take up to 64 gigabytes in external storage. Now how comfortable you find the phone to hold and use and even carry around with you is really going to depend on a lot of things like the size of your hands, the size of your pockets, and the size of whatever else you're carrying it in. The phone did fit well into my hand when I was just holding it, but it's a lot harder for me to use for one-handed operation. It was very awkward and I noticed that I had to stretch my thumb around a lot in order to reach it. It's also really hard for me to reach other areas on the screen. So this is definitely a phone that you're gonna to wanna to use with two hands unless you have very large mitts. It also did not fit very well into my pockets, but I did find that it fit into the cell phone pocket of my purse. The screen itself is a very large six inches. Believe it or not, that puts it sort of in the middle of the field, larger than some, but definitely not the biggest phablet that you're gonna find around. It's got a 1080p HD resolution, also has Nokia's clear black display filter, so that means it's gonna be a little bit easier to read outside in broad daylight. There's some automatic settings you can put on that will change the brightness when you go outdoors and when you come back in. Since the phone is so large, one thing you'll notice is a third column that Microsoft has added here for phones of this size. Live tiles will still only stretch two column widths wide, not the full area, but you have a lot more room to play with. You can see many more icons on this large screen than you can on any of the smaller screen phones. The 1520 is running Windows Phone 8 Update 3 right out of the box. It's got a lot of apps for you preloaded, including Nokia apps, AT&T apps, and a couple others besides. Now, one of the phone's claims to fame is the 20 megapixel camera on here. This does use the PureView technology. Most of the time, your photos will resolve to five megapixels, like if you update it online or send them to a friend. However, the 20 megapixel image can be useful if you're gonna do a lot of lossless cropping and if you want to print a full size image. As usual, you can switch from the default Nokia camera app to any other lens, including the native Windows Phone camera. There are a lot of photo tools, filters, and extra fun apps that you can use. For the most part, even on automatic mode, I found that the pictures were pretty good. There's also the typical Windows Phone camera button. This is something that you can hold and press to trigger the camera. You can also press it as a shutter button. You can use on-screen controls as well. As I mentioned before, the 1520 is the first Windows phone to come with a quad-core processor. You're looking at a 2.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 chipset. Other specs include LTE and NFC, of course. The pricing is pretty reasonable for a phone of this size, $200 on AT&T with a new two-year service agreement. Overall, I really like the phone's design. I think it's light and slim and attractive. I especially like this red color. I think it's pretty easy to handle too. The specs are top notch. It doesn't have every single whistle and bell that you're gonna find on some of the other advanced Android phones, but if you don't need all of these, then I can recommend this device. This is the Nokia Lumia 1520. I'm Jessica Dahlcourt for CNET. You can check out my full review at CNET.com. Thank you.